Hello. Hope everyone is doing well. After that performance and that result, I imagine everyone on here has got a little smile on their face. She can tell. I enjoyed myself. <laughs> That's me. Although, in fairness, most of this voice loss is due to the refereeing decision. The penalty. I was, I was, I was angry. Um, but yeah, let's let's just get into the game, man. Yeah, so obviously, you know, for a lot of these players, it's the first time seeing Ellen Road full. You know, a full Ellen Road crowd is is nervy and difficult. If you watch the players when they're coming out, you can see a few of the lads kind of just go like that because they couldn't <laughs> believe how loud it was. But I think it took time to settle, and you know, when they score a goal in the sixth minute. You know, it, you see it, you go, oh, God, here, here we go. All right, we're back. You know what I mean? That was official. That was it then. That's when you knew we were back. But on, no, honestly, like, the the goal, the goal was we lost it, right? And then it was a long ball from that counter, from that. Um, Ras Rasmus needed to do much better there. I was really disappointed in him there. You know, that's the type of thing you, you see when, when you watch the game back from an analyst's point of view and, and, and you can't teach it you just got to tell him your body's you got to sort your body shape out there you've got to you know, you've got to deal with that there's there's no teaching it you've got to deal with that you know what i mean um but yeah look look like i said people make mistakes but then but then after that the, the ball goes in the box the marking is is horrendous again like that's one of them goals when you watch back on the foot when you watch the footage back those are the type of goals where you can go error, 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 error. But they're all similar errors. They're all positional errors. You know, whose man is it? And those are things you can work on on the training ground quite quickly. So so, so in, in, in a way, that's that's a better goal to concede, in my opinion. If there is a good goal to concede, but it's one you can work on easily and figure out, oh, I should have marked him. And then you work on that progression and you keep working on it to make it consistent. So yeah, after that, but then after their goal, in all fairness, I think you know, we, we were more relaxed, knowing that there was less pressure because we were losing. I'm not sure, but the players got to grips with the game. And for that first half, especially, we were absolutely fantastic. And what I mean is, everything Jesse Marsh is known for, everything this system would bring, they did to it incredible extent in the first half you know i'll never hear it i'll never hear it again all this i'll never have it i'm not having it this jesse marsh is boring football i said in my previous video you can't base jesse marsh on last season that was not his team that was not his players that was not his situation he came into a team that needed to stay up and he did everything he could to stay up he couldn't teach them everything there wasn't enough time this is a Jesse Marsh team, and you're seeing it. When when we when we pressure a team like Wolves, who were extremely good defensively last season, it's a similar team, an extremely similar team actually. And we make them absolutely bab themselves every time their keeper kicks it to one of their defenders. I must have caught four or five times. We pressed them so high, they didn't even get out of the box. You know, the, the one on Saar where he had to take the touch sideways where he nearly scores, he couldn't touch it forward because Bamford was there. And that, 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 is, that is testament to Jesse Marsh in the system and the lads for performing that system. Like, the tactics were perfect in that first half after the goal. That was a terrible goal to concede. But no, a decent player to Wolves, in fairness. But for me... You know, you've got to you got to look at a game. You know, you come into the game and you concede in six minutes again. You know, the players from last year will be thinking, "Oh, again," because it was so easy. But that's where you need the new players to come in, the fresh minds. And we'll get on to individual performances. But I just want to talk about the first half and what we saw was pressing, the passing forward. Although it didn't come off every time, and we'll get on to that. We'll learn, right? We'll learn. The idea and the, the tenacity and the desire and the quality at times was absolutely fantastic. We'd not seen that all last season. And what we're seeing is a really good structure. You know, in my opinion, we didn't get caught on too much like we were pre-season. They've obviously worked on that, right? 
you know, the gaps obviously came out wide, but you've got to remember as well, Neto is a fantastic, he's, he's an extraordinary player. I said this years ago, you know, he was unlucky with injuries last season, but Neto, Neto is a top talent. In Rafinha's first season, they were compared together. Now, that's the type of talent he can be if he stays fit. And in terms of that, like Rasmus, you know, he got beat once or twice, but, you know, he, he stood up once or twice. And in terms of out-and-out 1v1 wingers, there's not going to be many more like him. Neto is a very... Ext- is, is, we saw it with that Maradona turn, that... Credit where credit's due. That is an incredible bit of skill. If that's Rafinha, we're talking about it for months. That is an incredible piece of skill, in fairness. So, yeah, you, you know, that first half for me epitomised Leeds United. Conceding early, but then fighting back. The goal, by the way, we won the ball, kicked it up, lost the ball, and then won the ball back within five seconds. And Jesse Marsh wants that. He wants you to win the ball extremely quickly. And we did that. How many times? Countless, endless. There's times we're a bit of a running positions. But you'll work on that. This is the, the but in in a strange way, this is the last friendly because you don't know what to expect. You know, from Premier League teams until you play one, and this was it. So now the players understand that they can't make these mistakes because this is the Premier League, and every player is a top player basically. But. You know, you've got to credit the team. And I think some of the interplay we were doing was extraordinary. You know, it, it, it's so close to clicking everywhere on the pitch, isn't it? It's so close. And, and I just love the energy that I saw from everyone. I know it's the first game of the season. Of course, you're going to get energy. But I watched some of the other games as well. I, w- I watched uh, the Everton game and all that. And because this is after the Everton game. I couldn't record earlier because my voice, honestly, was gone. But I, I see a real identity with Leeds United, a real strong identity from back to front. So the first half performance was, for me, incredible. I, I, no, I, it's one of, it, including all of last year, it's one of the best first half performances I've seen since the first season. It was really good, really good. There's not much faults. And every player was doing their job. You know, I'll, you know, we went to that time, and Elan makes that incredible save. Uh, you know, the little, the little chance. He can't, again, the marking is a bit iffy. Um, that's definitely an area I'd, I'd look at, and I'd imagine the club are looking at, the, 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 scout, the scouts, the coaches are looking at 100%. The certain areas, the marking was off. You know, they weren't quite used to the quick movement, potentially. That's what I mean by that's the Premier League, right? You've got that quality. Yeah. Uh, second half, I think we saw what Wolves can do. There's no doubt in my mind, you know, for all their, for all their rolling around and all oh, that. I didn't even spoke about the penalty, have I? I don't want it. It, it angers me. <laughs> it is angering me. That is the most stonewall penalty I've ever seen. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The keeper totally wipes Rasmus out with his arm. The head's got he's headed the ball away and he's wiped him out. But it's a stonewall penalty. That's why I've lost my voice. I was fuming. And then was it just before or just after? Um, bang! It goes down because Rocker scraped the air next to his head, holding his face, crying like a little baby. Uh, and and <laughs> that's what it was, wasn't it? And that's that's a foul apparently, but when a but but when when a when their player punches Rasmus, well, forearms Rasmus in the skull, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, saw nothing wrong with it. So there it is again, you know. Here we go again, VAR and all that stuff. I'll leave that out. I don't care. But that's rubbish. Yeah, that's the first half. Perfect. Apart from this first six minutes, you get rid of that. It's an incredible half of football. Entertaining, entertaining game as well, in fairness. It was a good game. I think Wolves had... I'm not going to talk about Wolves too much, but they had, you know, they showed what they can do. Elan was up to it, though. I keep us up to it. But yeah, um, second half, yeah. Like I said, Wolves came out second half, and they had to do something. They had to put the foot on it. And it showed their t- the players they have. Their midfield is incredible, by the way. Their midfield is very, very technical. Very technical. Especially with Neves and Gibbs-White. 
It's a very technical midfield with a lot of talent in it. Let's not forget that. And I think our boys, apart from the first 15 minutes of the second half, dealt with it. The first 15 minutes of the second half were a little concerned. At the time, I was a little concerned because we sort of didn't, didn't do anything. We kind of sat, the pressing wasn't as high, the pressing wasn't as intense. Maybe that was planned, maybe that was a point in the game where you have to just relax a little bit. You know, take the percentages down, get your breath back till we introduce the subs. I don't know. Maybe it was just the Wolves clicked, because they, they were keeping the ball, and, and, and we couldn't get it. And when we did get it, we kicked it long, or we tried to find Bamford, and a little bit of sharpness there. Bamford would have kept a few more of them. They went under his foot and stuff, but that's to be expected. Um, yeah, and it was, you know, Ilan. But what, what I would say is, and there's people questioning the defence. I think as a unit, apart from some marking issues on the counter, when we sat deep and they were just passing around us, I think we did quite well. I think we, bloss- we blocked everything. Nothing got through. Corners, as a corner, it's a gamble then. Who wins the header? I think for the most part, the defensive, uh, Lorente and Cork, as a defensive duo, were solid in the sense that they got rid of everything. They didn't, you know, they didn't get fingered. You know, it was, it was, it was solid as a two, in my opinion. And, and we sought that pressure at 15 minutes. And then you're thinking, right, we need a change. And then, and then Jesse Marsh gets click ready. And I'm sure a lot of Leeds fans, uh, because of performances in the last two years for Mateus Click, were like, why we bring Click on? But what I will say about the Jesse Marsh system is every player has a role, defined role. It's like I said about Adam Farshaw, he will have a role this season where in situations like this, but maybe a bit similar when we're winning, he can come on and do his little bit and keep the game 1-0, 2-1. But we need we needed we needed uh, buzz and creativity, and running and energy. We needed that back. And one player that epitomises energy and buzz is Mateus Click. And I must say, as an individual performance, he changed the entire game, and he was fantastic. And when he came on, you know, he got on the ball, and he did what he did. He did what he does. He gets the ball, he turns it over quickly, he runs forward little passes, little intricate passes, which works in this system when he's, when, he's, when he's not tired as well, when he's come off the bench and he's fresh and he wants to impress because he wants to get in the Poland squad. This is what you've got, a, young, a, a, a group of lads that want to impress. And Mateus clicks movement and quick play. And for the goal, him and Greenwood were part of that and they just came on. That's two subs. That's where subs are hugely important in this system. They are hugely important. Like in Bielsa's, they wasn't as big, right? Probably the subs were not as you bring on a player to score a goal, right? But in this system, subs are extremely important. And we saw that with Tess Click and Sam Greenwood, who were both part of the goal. Yeah. And in terms of like after that, when Click came on, I feel like we controlled the game again. It went a bit more end to end. But the fall relentless forward passing is a joy to watch. We got confident. Well, the more ball we get, the more forward runs we do the more confident we get. They've got the crowd going and the players were buzzing. They were really enjoying themselves, I think. A few, a few of them got a bit tired, but that's to be expected. Um, so yeah, I was, really, I was really impressed with the transitional play then after that 15 minutes in the second half was extraordinary. It was extraordinary, it was. This is the team that I wanted to see. And don't get me wrong, we won't see the team like this every game. Teams won't allow us to play that way. But if this is a consistent theme, Leeds United are going to be absolutely fine this season. And we could cause some upsets. Individual performances in terms of the players, obviously. Uh, I've got to talk about the golden boy, haven't I? Brendan Aronson, wow. That is uh, genuinely, I'm not exaggerating. In my opinion, from what I, I was watching him a lot, because I'm small and thingy like him and I like to run at people. I want to learn from him. I was watching him and... I, in terms of debuts, that was one of the most complete debuts I've ever seen at Leeds United. Probably one of the best. Seriously, I thought it was incredible. His drive, his energy, but not even that. His, his, his positional awareness. He reads the game so well. 
you know, that little burst of pace he's got, if we can really hone in his final product, what a talent. And we saw it with a goal. I'm giving it him. I don't care. That's his goal. A midfielder running into the box. A late run from a midfielder we've not had in years since maybe like Alex Mowat or something like that. We've not had that. And now we've got it. And look what it does for you. That late running midfielder, that elusive midfielder, they don't know where he is. They didn't know where he was. He was in between the defenders. Who's this? Where's he come from? That's what they were saying. He need to play like that. And, and he's just going to grow and grow. Like, we'll, let's not get over thing, you know. He's going to have games where he's going to be quiet because he's that type of player. Games he'll, he'll, he'll fire up, it'll allow him to play. Some games will shut him down. This That's where we'll see Rocker and Adams have more of the ball. Because Rocker and Adams, well, Adams had, oh, what a terrier, by the way. What a player. Uh, Rocker was a bit quieter, but that ping he did. You see that ping in the first half? Oh. His little curl around about three men. What a ball. Uh, out to Strauch. You know, the game was more for the attacking players today as opposed to the defensive players. But in terms of Rocker and Adams, I thought they were solid. Rocker got a bit tired in the second half, hence why he came off. But Adams today, for me, was outstanding, consistent. He was really, he's really good. He did the things, the little dirty things in there. You know, the little break in the play up, the transitional play, the forward passing, he's quick. He knows where he wants, he knows where that ball's going instantly when he gets that ball. He knows exactly where to pass it. And breaking them lines with those passes is just a, a, a credit to see. Credit to see? A credit. And it's great to see. Yeah, I, I, and it, it, look, like, you know, you can't continue without talking about Elon Melier. Look, we're going to have chances this season. We're also going to let the opponents have chances this season. That's going to happen. It's going to be a scoring fest. Can we score more than you at, at times? That's what it's going to be like. And, and you've got to remember, a goalkeeper is part of the game. And the saves he had to do, he did, obviously, apart from the goal. But I'll say everything. And there's two or three saves in there he just made. He was commanding in his box. He was, he was motivating the players. He was geeing the players up. I thought, as a goalkeeper, that was an, just an all-around decent performance from Elan. And this is what we need. A confident Elan is incredibly good. That's why everyone was talking about him for France's next number one. People forget that because of last season. He's an incredibly good goalkeeper, is Elan Melier. He really is, and he's going all the way, in my opinion. I'm, I'm just overall buzzing with it. Seriously. Even players like, you know, at clock at the back, I thought was excellent. He didn't put a foot wrong. He was solid, he dominated. Positionally, I thought he was decent. <laughs> Harrison had areas in the game where he was he was on it, like on it. Rodrigo's interplay and movement was excellent. He was buzzing around. He was causing problems. This is why you don't give up on players. You don't give up on players. You can't. And I'm not saying he's back. You know, he's going he's gonna to do this every game. But you've got to give him that opportunity to do this every game. We can't just say, oh, it's just one game. It is one game, but it's one game for Brendan Aronson. And we're all praising him. So, so this is a player now, a new system. Right, a totally new system. And we've got to give him faith. We've got to believe in him. If he plays the next 10 games and he doesn't do anything, he doesn't impress. All right. Just, just take it performance by performance. And he was excellent today. And this is what gives me faith for Furpo. It's a completely new environment for the team, for everyone. It's a fresh, a clean slate. A new page of the book, new chapter. And we've got to give these players a chance. That's why I, I believe in Furpo when he, if he can get faith. I genuinely do. Having said that, I thought Stroud did what Stroud does at left back. He's a solid operator at left back, but he's clearly from you know he's not a left back, and I still don't want him left back. I want him in central defence. I think he's just that presence, that dominating presence we need there. But you could go around the pitch and you could see honestly every performance was decent. So I so saw them people saying they can't do it in the prem. They've just done it in the prem. The question is, can these players perform consistently in the Prem? But that's a question for every footballer. This whole, they, they won't be able to do it in the Prem, is a load of rubbish, and I believe that. They've just done it today against a decent side. And I'm not getting carried away saying they're here, they've made it. No, what I'm saying is, at this performance, they were excellent. 
their first performance as well. And they've done it in the Prem. And apparently they can't do it in the Prem because they're from another league. Can they be consistent? That's the question we need to answer. That's what we're going to look at now going through the season into Southampton and onwards. Are they consistent? But in terms of talent, as I say, I take performances from the best. This is what they can do. And they will play better. They will play worse this season. How consistently can they play well? That's the question. Yeah. And and Jesse Marsh having a scrap at the end. I love it. He's awesome, isn't he? As he would say, as Aronson said, awesome. What a guy. I, don't, I just... I just, I'm glad that everyone's, because I've always backed Jesse Marsh and I always will because I know what he can do. I know what his teams do. His teams are not boring. His teams play good football. It's quick, erratic, fast football and it's good and it's entertaining. And that's what we saw today. Don't be missing. But that's what we saw. And if we can do that at a consistent level, I'm not saying we'll do it every game, but if we can get lucky with injuries and keep that performance up consistently throughout a majority of the season, we will be absolutely fine. The biggest worry, like I said, and I, I, is injuries. I'm not bothered about performances. I know we'll play enough times well to stay in the Premier League. It's just, will we have injuries that can affect that? That's all I'm worried about because that's why I'm, I'm scared for injuries. Every time I play in hobbles, I'm going, he's injured. And let me just add as well today, we talk about Wolves missing their main striker. We're missing Sinistero, who's 25 million. We're missing Liam Cooper, who a lot of people think should be in the squad, who is a good squad player as well. We're missing Dan James, who just watch for Dan James. I'm telling you, Dan James in this system can cause damage. Believe me, watch out for Dan James. He wasn't playing today because of his red card. The under-21s 20, under performances last night, I told, I did a video on Gavi and I said, watch this guy. Mateo Joseph getting four. What a, what a talent. I remember him in January. When we brought him in, everyone were complaining. Well, this is he's not going to play for the first team. Give the guy time. Sonny Perkins played well. These are the young players that are coming through. Leeds is in a good place in terms of development. Now we've just got to be patient as a as a fan base. We're going to lose games this season. We're going to lose a lot, but we're also going to win. <laughs> you know, and I, we've just got to relax. We've got our first game now is about building on this. I know that's so cliche to say. It's the first game of the season and that sets a tone for the next few weeks. And we've got that win. It took us, what was it, October last year to get our first win? We've done that in the first weekend this year. That's a huge weight. They know they can win in this league now. They against the side, Wolves are a good side. They might not have strengths in depth, but their first 11 is very strong and very technical. And there's some great ballers in there. And when you went toe-to-toe, and I'd argue we were the better team in a lot, a lot of areas of that game. But I'm maybe 20, 15 minutes. But yeah, I'm rambling. But this is what I've got to say. I enjoyed the performance. I was happy. I was I was engaged. Apart from the first six minutes where I wanted to just turn it off and give up. <laughs> um, but yeah, look. Southampton next. What I might do, I'm, I'm thinking about it. It's just about time. I've got uni starting again soon. Uh, about doing in-depth breakdowns of the system and stuff. I might do one a month, you know, like four games at once kind of thing. We'll see. Or someone let me know what, what you think about that. Because that's what I enjoy doing. I love talking, but I want to go into certain areas of the pitch and stuff like that. I think it's better to have a bigger sample size, maybe do two or three games and see if we've improved in certain areas, our dangers, consistent themes, and stuff like that. I'm going to do more player profiles as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that. That's a great start to the season. And now it's just about keeping players fit and being consistent. And the system will shine, as we saw today. Everyone have a good a good weekend. We can relax on Sunday, watch some watch some football, and be happy. And you can all watch match of the day, or you probably all watch match of the day when I release this. So excellent stuff. Peace.